Hello ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? It's your boy is the 33. I am welcoming you back to another episode of the Anarchy Analysis Predictions for the LEC and LCS. And today we're going to be covering week 5's results as well as week 6's predictions. And also we've got the mid-split results to run down. And if you don't know what that is, in a sense, we're going to be breaking down where I predicted each team to finish at the end of the split to where they finished here at a halfway point of the season. But enough of this, let's jump straight into things with our LEC Friday results. So, let's jump straight ahead into Friday's games. Starting with the first one of the day, it's going to be Mad Lions versus Misfits. Now, we predicted a Misfits win here, and in actuality, Misfits actually did win this game. So, there's our first correct prediction of the week. Next up, we have Vitality and Schalke duking it out on the rift, and we went for Schalke in this matchup. And they do win this matchup against Vitality in a very, very good matchup. Next up, we have XL versus G2. And this matchup, we went with G2 for this one. And overall, it was very, very interesting and a good matchup. They do beat out XL in actuality. And I really enjoyed this match. So the fourth matchup of the day, we have OG versus SK. And for this matchup, we went with origin and they do win this match here and it's won quite convincingly and a very very nice match to watch and lastly on our friday games we have fanatic versus rogue in a very very interesting match and probably the match of the day and for this matchup we do go with fanatic and they do win this matchup. Obviously, it was very, very good and entertaining. Be sure to check it out as well. I've said that for every match now. So, let's get on to Saturday's results. Starting with our match of the week. It's SK versus Vitality. And this Anarchy Analysis match ended very bizarrely in a Vitality picking up their first winner this season. And oh boy, this was very interesting as this was our second wrong prediction this week. But do we see any more of these wrong predictions this week? Let's find out. Our second matchup of the day is going to be a playoff place clash between XL and Schalke. In which we do go for the XL boys in this one. And do they win? Yes, indeedy, they beat out Schalke in a very, very good match. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I did say, do we get any more wrong? And we do here. In the Rogue vs. Misfits game, we predict a nice, easy Misfits win. But in actuality, it's the boys in blue who do pick up the win in this game as we move ever closer to the end of the split. So, we come into the game where I predicted an upset correctly. That's right, Mad Lions versus G2 here. And I predicted the Mad Lions winning this matchup. And they do win this one in a very, very convincing fashion. And, oh boy, I really did enjoy this match. And it does make me wonder if G2 will actually finish in first place this season. And finally, for the last match of this week in the LEC, we have Fnatic versus Origin in an all-out brawl in the LEC match of the week. And we go for the boys in Orange, Fnatic, and these boys do manage to beat out Origin in a very close matchup. But that's it for the LEC, let's jump into the LCS. So, we start Saturday with TSM versus 100 Thieves in a very, very close battle. And this match, we go for TSM. And in actuality, TSM do win out here against the 100 Thieves. Next up, we have C9CLG, the unbeaten monsters versus the 
very low rated CLG team in which we do go for that C9 roster that's undefeated to beat the CLG team and in fact they actually do in pretty easy fashion. Next up we do have an interesting matchup, it's Team Dignitas versus Immortals in the match that we go for Immortals in and they lose against this Dignitas team fairly convincingly. And for our final game on Saturday, it's FlyQuest vs GGU, which we make the surprising decision to go with the Golden Guardians against this FlyQuest team, and that surprising decision backfires as FlyQuest beat GGU as we move into Sunday's games. So, we move into Sunday, where we start with Evil Geniuses versus Team Liquid, where Broxer gets his first showing here in the LCS, and does he win his first match? No, he does not. Sadly, Evil Geniuses beat out the debuting Broxer in a very, very good matchup. So... I do not know what's wrong with my head as we come into the Anarchy Analysis match of the week. It's Immortals versus Cloud9. And for some reason I've gone with Immortals in this match. Please can someone tell me what was going on in my head last week? Because I have no clue. But the Immortals do lose and it was a eh matchup I guess. But let's move into our next game. Alright Buckaroos welcome back. We have GGU versus 100 Thieves in a match where both teams are looking to pick up a win going one on one this week and I go with 100 Thieves, fairly obvious choice why, and do 100 Thieves win? Yes they do, pretty easy, good game, should watch, you know. And we finish out Sunday with FlyQuest versus CLG, one team looking to go 2-0 while the other is looking to go 1-1 one and, one. and I go with FlyQuest this game and FlyQuest do win it's a fairly standard game and yeah great game let's move on to Monday so we arrive on the final day of of the week and our last results bit it's Dignitas versus Team Liquid in a match that we go for Team Liquid Broxer does get his first win ladies and gentlemen as Team Liquid do win here in a great matchup and I'm actually enjoying Monday Night League and here's one of the matches why and finally we have TSM vs Evil Geniuses to wend out this week in which we do go for the TSM to keep the trend of a 2-0 week every week and yeah they do win here very very easily to be honest and let's move into our tally chart for the weeks. So ladies and gentlemen, this is getting really late and I want to get this video out by Thursday. And as you can see here, Friday we got 4 out of 5, Saturday we got 3 out of 5, which is overall 7 out of 10. And that puts our grand total at 37 out of 50, which is obviously really good. I've been dropping 13 matches so far this season. And granted, a couple of them have been stupid. As for the LCS, we do better than last week, going for... A net positive of 1, giving us 6 out of 10 overall, obviously 2-2-2 two, two, two every single day, perfect results on the Monday, giving us a grand total of 27, which has taken us even higher above the halfway mark, obviously we need a, another good week next week to obviously do any better, but yeah, that's going to be it, let's move into our actual predictions for this week. So, we're going to end out this week's week 6 predictions in the LEC and our LCS by reverting back to the old method I promise next week's will be a full animated version of this but I haven't had time to do so yet and it does take quite a bit of time to set it up so next week expect a full predictions thing I'll start working on it as soon as I finish this and yeah Let's jump into the LEC predictions for this week. Starting with Friday, we have Rogue vs. XL, Vitality vs. Mad, Fnatic vs. Misfits in the Anarchy Analysis Match of the Week, Schalke vs. Origin, and G2 vs. SK. So, first matchup, Rogue vs. XL. We've gone with the Young Guns, the Rogue team, 
it's going to be close. It's one of them playoff place matchups that are for about the four fifth places. You've obviously got Torre and Expect on one side versus uh, Hans Sammer and Larsen on the other. Is it and Finn as well? But you've got to think it's matchup favors the rogue team. You'd need Torre and Expect to obviously perform well for this uh, XL team to actually win. As for our second matchup of the day, it will be Vitality versus Mad. This one is very hard to choose. Do you go for the team that just picked up their first win? Or the team that just beat the world finalist in G2? I think we go with the Mad Lions here. There's just a hunch they're going to win against a team that's only just won their first match. Okay, so we get into a, the Anarchy Analysis match of the week. Fnatic versus Misfits. And this one is going to be interesting to break down for you guys. As I'm intrigued to see who wins this. Both teams had a, a rough week last week. And I think that we're going to see a Fnatic win. Against the team that lost out last week. And I think it's going to be very, very interesting to see... If they do. Now our fourth matchup of the day will be Schalke versus OG, and I've gone with OG. Schalke, yes, have looked better. They're picking up wins now, which is something new to them. Obviously, they're at two and nine, is it? It's something like that. The record's quite bad. Not as bad as Vitality, but you know, you gotta go with Origin. They're looking sharp, I guess. They're still a good team, and I think they have got the more experienced players and the probably the more skilled players. As for the final matchup of the day, no need to say any more than G2 win. G2 have been playing quite well. Granted, they have been losing matches here and there every week. They're still a good team, and I think this is probably the week they go 2-0. Now we move into Saturday's games. We have SK versus Misfits, Mad Lions versus XL, Fnatic versus Schalke, Rogue versus Origin, and G2 versus Vitality. Now, SK versus Misfits is your first matchup of the day. Gotta go with the Misfits boys. They've been performing well this season, overperforming as most people would say. Obviously, people don't rate that squad that they've got right now, but they're doing well, considering it. And they've got some contenders for Rookie of the Split, as well as MVP of the Split. Now, we're moving on from one team that's looking like Rookie of the Split contenders to another team that has a rookie contender in Kazi. It's Mad Lions versus XL. And this matchup... I feel it's going to go to the Mad Lions in another matchup that's intriguing for me for XL as well. Because it's two playoff contender matches for XL in the very same week. It's going to be hard for them this week, honestly, to actually perform well. And I have put them down as an 0-2 week. And Mad Lions are 2-0 week because they're that sort of squad Mad Lions that are performing well. I think I've for nearly every week predicted them to win, and it's kind of ob well, it's kind of expected now for them to win against XL because they've just got that more oomph to go for game wins. Now the third matchup of the day is Fnatic versus Schalke, and this one yet again, and probably the rest of the matches bar the second to last match is going to be a pretty easy prediction it's Fnatic versus Sh Schalke and I've gone with the Fnatic boys picking up another win having a 2-0 week and doing very very well as they should be will we see another unique top laner pick here for Bwipo will he rock out a singe again who knows but I've gone with the Fnatic boys it's going to be a good game and same with the next matchup Rogue versus OG who have I gone for here I've gone for Rogue Rogue, I feel, are going to do a very, very good thing on the Friday. 
and they're just going to carry the momentum over to Saturday, taking on probably what would be considered a tougher opponent than XL. But, you know, you've got to go for it. And I think Rogue, it's going to be a Finn carry game. Finn's going to dominate his top lane, absolutely smash it, and then take that lead against Alfari and go push against everyone. He's just going to go on a split push, meh, Egger chaining, kill, spree game, you know, one of them things. But, yeah, I've gone for Rogue <laughs> as we move into the last match of the day. G2 versus Vitality to end out this LEC week. And I've gone with G2. There's no need to say any other team than G2. G2 are really, really good. And if they get a Karthus, we all know how uh, Jankos likes to play that, as he gave such a good tutorial on how to play the champion. But yeah, G2 winning here and having their first 2-0 week in a couple of weeks, realistically, which is a surprise to actually say. But yeah. Let's move on to the LCS, shall we? So, starting on Saturday, we have FlyQuest vs. T9. Our Anarchy Analysis Match of the Week, TSM vs. Team Liquid. Golden Guardians take on Immortals and 100 Thieves vs. Evil Geniuses. So, we're going to start with our Saturday matches here. And the first matchup, C9 vs. FlyQuest. Gotta go with C9. They're undefeated. They're good. They're performing well. Will they have a perfect 18-0 split? More than likely. Will they continue that form to playoffs? Not so likely. Next matchup. TSM vs. Team Liquid. This is a matchup a lot of people are intrigued in. Is Team Liquid won the first matchup between these two without having Broxer in the lineup? And this time, Broxer's going to be playing for Team Liquid. Will it be an as dominant win? No, because it wasn't that dominant last time. TSM misplayed one thing and that cost them the game and Team Liquid just capitalized and had better scaling late game, I do believe. But I think the way that TSM's form is currently, it's got to go towards them. They've been playing a lot better. And if we're going to keep with our TSM sequence thing, they go 0-2, 2-0. 2-0, 0-2, 2-0. They're due another 2-0 week, let's be honest, if we're keeping the sequence going. So I've gone with TSM. I like that form, and I'm keeping with that sequence, ladies and gentlemen. So, GGU versus Immortals. It's a close matchup, honestly, on paper. And I've gone with the Immortals team. The X smithy jungle... I feel is going to carry that game, and it's going to be intriguing to watch as a whole. It was close second to be my Anarchy Analysis match of the week. That being said, there is one team that I haven't covered in the NALCS, and I forget who it is. I think it is Golden Guardians. So that could have been it for them, but who knows. I'll have a look see my notepad real quick. As I talk about the next matchup, and yes, it is. Um, 100 Thieves versus Gone uh, Evil Geniuses is the last Saturday matchup. I've gone with 100 Thieves here. I feel that there's going to be a misgank top lane by Sven Skaren. Someday, just outplays him like he usually does, gets a double kill, and then I feel that the misplays, the way that people have been winning against 100 Thieves is. They're catching Meteos out, just killing him over and over for his misplacement, and then just winning off of generally the higher amount of gold, and then just pushing the win. That's how they've been playing against Under Thieves, and I've noticed that. If I've noticed that, I'm sure that a lot of teams have noticed that Meteos' positioning is quite bad, and he's easy to be caught out, so he should be well aware of that, so... Whether or not they do change how he's playing, it should be interesting to see. 
Now, Sunday, we have 100 Thieves versus Team Liquid, 100 Thieves yet again, going from one game straight to the next. Dignitas versus FlyQuest, TSM versus CLG, and Evil Geniuses versus Golden Guardians. Now, first matchup of the day is 100 Thieves Team Liquid. You gotta go with Team Liquid. If you're playing last on the Saturday and then about 9 hours, 8 hours later, you're playing first on the Sunday. You're going to be a bit iffy. And Team Liquid will have obviously had time to watch VODs and get in, do that sort of stuff, prepare. Whereas 100 Thieves don't get as much time, obviously. It's about 2 hours, 3 hours less time. And yeah, I feel that Team Liquid are going to win that. Dignitas vs FlyQuest. I've gone with here FlyQuest. FlyQuest obviously are a decent team route. And they're in that mixed bag in the middle of the pack, like tied third, I do believe. And TSM are tied second, well, a free second place, I do believe. And then C9 in first. And yeah, the FlyQuest team, I feel, should win here in their matchup. Next, we have TSM versus ELG. The El Clasico of the LCS is going to end in another TSM win. I wish that TSM won in the summer so I could have actually said a stat of how long they've actually been undefeated against CLG because it was over a thousand days. Now it's more like uh, maybe close to 100, maybe 200 days since their last defeat to CLG, but who knows. Uh, next game we have Evil Geniuses versus Golden Guardians. I've gone with the Golden Guardians here. And I'm going out of the box say... GGU should win this matchup, honestly. I, I feel that Evil Geniuses are a little hit and miss in recent performances. So you can either say, yeah, they're going to win. Or if you look at how they played against TSM, no, they're not going to win. And yeah, I feel that GGU should, and this is a should, win this one. And this is probably the first time that I've predicted, oh no, I predicted one last week. Probably one of the more convincing predictions of GGU winning anyway this time. Now we move into Monday Night League and we have Immortals vs C9 and CLG vs Dignitas. Now, this, these two matches are your matches of the week from the LCS. I don't see how they are when you've got a TSM CLG match on the day before and a TSM vs Team Liquid matchup on the day before that. But, obviously, they choose their matches for this. I guess you can't have two TSM matches on a Monday, but who cares. Anyway, first matchup, Immortals vs. C9. I've gone with C9. C9 just the best right now, hands down. No chance anyone's going to beat him. And Dignitas beating out CLG, fairly standard. I mean, at the start of the season, I would have said the opposite considering the rosters, and yet yeah, that's kind of kicked me in the teeth a little by how they've actually been playing. But yeah, that's going to be it for the predictions. We will end this video with our comparison of our league table. I'll be right back. So, this is attempt two at recording this, because my first attempt fucked up on me. But let's run down for you the... LEC mid split predictions and we're gonna run down mine first G2 Fnatic Origin Rogue Mad Lions XL Schalke Misfit Vitality and SK and now the results that you're gonna see on this right hand side are the current ones these were taken after Saturday's games because I couldn't do it on Friday because I forgot to but as you can see there's a lot of teams tied for their spots, and there's only a few that have their spots kind of there. Now, if we look at these bottom three in the LEC currently, SK, Schalke, and Vitality. And we look at my predictions, I predict them all outside of playoffs, and they are just outside of playoffs. Obviously, they're the three or four wins off of seventh, which is kind of not good. But these teams obviously are doing poorly. I did see Schalke 
underperforming this season due to the fact that they did lose upset as a player and he went over to Origin and he this team has been kind of white poor. Vitality, again, they lost quite a few players in the offseason. They lost Jizuke, they lost Attila. And, yeah, you, them players that you consider your superstar players, when they leave and you have to take in other players, it kind of shows you that it's quite bad when you're missing them players. Now, we look at SK. Yeah, I predict him in his uh, 10th place spot. And... Considering their two losses away from it and Vitality two wins away from putting them in that spot, it's not something out of the question. These three teams can obviously switch places with ease, <clears throat> but whether or not they catch up to XL, it's kind of hard for them to do. Obviously, they need to be picking up wins against XL, but who knows? I think that it's going to be quite close for them, the playoff spots in especially that sixth place spot now looking at the joint fifth teams in rogue and mad lions yeah i predicted them being in this spot obviously rogue mad and xl for fifth and sixth they're currently sat in fifth sixth and seventh which is just one nudge below where i predict them finishing obviously there is a big difference in the positioning, because one of them's not in the playoff spots. But, you know, there's a team that we need to discuss a bit later to why they're not in that spot. But, you know, let's now move on to Rogue. Let's have a look at Rogue and Mad's lines, actually. I just said their position. Mad, a phenomenal team, in my opinion. They've got contenders for rookies of the split. There is another team in the league that I do feel has got contenders for that, and it's a team in first place. And, yeah, they're doing good. I like Kazi a lot. He's performing very well and is a phenomenal player. He's fit so well into the LEC, and so is the entire Madline squad, considering they were a European Masters team, except for Humanoid, who was on that splice unit. As a rogue... Rogue are Rogue, they're such a good team. You think last season in the summer split, the bunch of rookies made a phenomenal run, made playoffs, got knocked out, then did quite well in the regional qualifier. Didn't qualify, sadly, but Spice did, I do believe. And yeah, it was very, very good to see him performing well. Finn is a monster when he's playing well. When he's not, he kind of feeds, but we don't need to care about that, because he's mostly playing well. Now, I think it's time we discuss the top four teams that are all joint first. Now, if we look at my predictions, I predicted G2, Fnatic, and Origin as the top three. All three of them are in that top four bunch. It's kind of obvious where they're going to be, and... We'll just say this. G2 misplayed quite a few games recently, have been underperforming, in, have lost three games out of the last four. Yeah, they're starting to lose games. If this was done the week before, they would have been just in that first spot, narrowly. And now they have three other teams battling out against them for that first spot. Now, it's going to be close to see where and who gets that first seed. And, you know, it's going to be interesting. I love the LEC right now. And if we look at Fnatic and Origin, Origin picking up upset and just looking phenomenal. Obviously, you've got such a good squad there. The, the team of players are just very, very good. Destiny is performing well alongside Upset as well, I should point out. It's not just a one-man show there. Origin have carries in all lanes. Alfari, phenomenal player. Nuke Duck, a great player as well. And you just got to say that the certain picks that I'm seeing coming out of that Origin team, like they countered a Karthus jungle 
from SK by picking up a Nidalee. Because why not? Nidalee is still a good champion and can just roam a lot quicker than Karthus. Provides AP damage all the same. Obviously has her own built-in heal so she can stop a, a Krish Requiem killing her. But yeah, you know. Good good team up there. Same with Fnatic. Fnatic, you expect up there they pick up self-made in the off-season for losing out Broxa. But they're still a phenomenal team. And I think it's now time we discuss the elephant in the room. Misfits. I'm pleased that they're overachieving. That's all I can say, really, for them as a whole. But I could discuss how they're playing. Misfits, I predicted to be 8th. I predicted them to have one of these mess seasons, considering how they played last year. And it's just that they've had players like Febaven, who in the off-season or in previous weeks, reflecting back on the summer split, saying that he doesn't want to end his career on a season like that. Where... He comes in, back from NA, over to EU, plays on a Misfits team that's losing almost every week, underperforming, not looking good at all, and to come into this season with not much change to the roster, and people wanting Ronaldo to play instead of Febovin, it's looked quite, it was looking kind of bleak. When people saw that lineup announced for the first week, then when they go 0 and 2 first week, people are just assuming, yeah, misfits are misfits, they're going to be like this. Now, when people look at misfits, they're looking at monsters. Febavent has stepped up, he's become a leader, he's showcasing the skill. Why he was on that fanatic dream team that went undefeated 18 and 0. And it's looking amazing for them this season. I honestly think that this Misfits team are going to make semi-finals of playoffs at least. And go to the third, fourth place match, maybe? If that was such a thing. But who knows. But that's going to be it for the LEC breakdown. Let's jump over to the LCS. So, let's take a look at the LCS, starting with... My predictions here, and what you're going to see is something completely different to the actual truth. Now, I'm going to say this now. Everything that you're seeing here was done after Monday. After the Monday Night League. Because it's quite hard to obviously piece together everyone's mid-part, considering every team played their first match on the Sunday sometimes. So it's kind of hard to do, but I did it from the end of Monday. But as you can see here, Team Liquid at the top. It's not Team Liquid at the top, it's C9. And if we run down the entire league currently right now, is what we're running right now. At the bottom, Golden Guardians, who are kind of two places up. They're tied for that spot they're in with 100 Thieves. So technically they are in second to last. But they're just better on record for their win-loss against under Thieves and CLG. But CLG dead last, and I predicted them in the playoff spot. Now, it's quite hard for them to obviously make that playoff spot right now, because they're dead last, and I think they've only got one win. So yeah, that is kind of hard for them to do. Under Thieves, I predicted as a top four team. Like, if you look at the roster they have, they should be in the top four. Obviously, they're not. And they're sitting in ninth. And that is actually a shock. Up in eighth is Golden Guardians tied with them. They're doing okay. I did predict them just outside the playoffs in dead last. <laughs> but they're doing okay. Considering they're picking up wins here and there. Obviously, with CLG thrown this season, they've obviously got wins against them. And yeah, that is quite bad. Next up is Team Liquid, who I've put as number one. And 
Yeah, they're at number one because everyone expected Broxer to be playing for them. That being said, them visa issues really did screw it up. How it's actually going to be. So I think Team Liquid are just going to scrape that playoff spot. And I mean just. And it should be interesting to see whether or not they do make playoffs. Up in sixth is who I put in third because of the roster in Evil Geniuses. Now, that's a big yikes. As you can tell, I've got these predictions quite wrong. And EG, I expected to be doing a lot better than what they are. They're just not performing to the standard of that squad that they have. As for the teams above them, I'd say they were overperforming some of them. Dingtas, I expected to be down in 8th. They're actually doing really well this season. Like, you look at the people on that team, they're all veterans minus Johnson. And you've got players like Greg, who's showing up this season. He's doing very, very well. And no one really expected him to be doing this well. Because literally all he was on TSM was a ward that could move. But that's how TSM always treated their junglers. Anyway, up in 4th is Immortals. And I predicted him in 7th, just scraping or just missing out on playoffs. And with the squad they've got with Ix Smithy on it, they're doing well. I mean, there's not much more I can say than they're doing very well for themselves. And... I do like the lineup. Obviously, you've got steady hands on that team that know how to work, and yeah, it's doing good for them. Anyway, we get to our top three now, and TSM are here. I predicted them second, but third is doing fine. Obviously, they're one win behind FlyQuest, and yeah, they're doing good. I do like this TSM lineup currently. Dardog is overperforming. And he's not toxic. He's performing well. Like, everyone didn't know how he was going to cope on this TSM team. And from what I've seen so far is he's one of the biggest step-up players in this team. He's carrying in terms of setups. He's being dominant in the laning phase. He's doing well. He's setting up plays and the good thing about that is he's got players like Bjergsen who's stepping up to his former form like the past three or four seasons Bjergsen's been quite passive in terms of how he's played this season he's popping off and getting solo kills here there and everywhere and that's similar to how Broken Blade's playing this year like I forget what he was playing he was playing Orn in his last matchup and he solo killed Kumo, who was playing a very good champion in the laning phase in set. Orn is not supposed to 1v1 and win against the set. And yet he does. He's playing well. He's doing good work. And yeah, this team's doing good. And another team that I predicted to be doing bad is what I consider overperforming massively in FlyQuest. This FlyQuest team is, you will put on paper, down is quite bad. But you've got people who have won leagues across the world. You've got Wild Turtle and Santorin, former TSM players who've won the NA LCS. You've got Power Evil, who's dominant in both EU and currently in NA. And... It's a good lineup. I mean, yeah, you've got players like Stunt who you wouldn't rate, but he's performing well. Like, this FlyQuest team is just overperforming and achieving greatness, and I don't want it to stop for them because they're looking good. And finally, we have C9. My, my C9. I predicted you just making playoffs in that fifth spot. Boy, have you overachieved. I swear, picking up Vulcan and Zven has turned this team around. Zven is an absolute monster. Like, holy moly. 
No one expected him to have like one or two deaths this season so far. People expected him to be at least 10, 12, maybe 13, 14 deaths right now. But he's sitting very, very nicely on top of that throne. And he has got to be a contender for MVP of the split. No matter what anyone says, he is doing good. But that's going to be it for this week's Anarchy Analysis predictions and results and the Spring Split Halfway Point Rundown. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new, if you want to, and I will see you guys later. Peace out.